Dear colleagues, um, first of all, I would like to thank my colleagues uh, Anatoly Vinsov, Natalia Slipakurova, Yulia Nikmatulina, and Olga Raeva, who take part in the project I'm going to talk about, and also the organizers of the workshop uh, for the chance to uh, present the results of our research. Uh, let me give a quick uh, overview of my presentation. Uh, I will begin by describing the algorithm we use in our model and its application to written texts. Uh, then I will discuss what makes spontaneous Russian speech different from um, written texts uh, and show how the algorithm proposed can be adapted uh, for spoken word recognition. Um, we postulate uh, that the mental lexicon plays a crucial role in the process of uh, both written and spoken uh, word recognition. Uh, so the algorithm we have chosen for our functional model can be called word segmentation by identification algorithm. It means that while interpreting a speech signal, a listener is comparing it, uh, comparing it with the entries of his or her mental lexicon. The idea itself is not new. Uh, it has been discussed for almost 30 years now, uh, for example, uh, by Fraunfelder and Peters, as well as by Norris and actually many others. Uh, according to the results described in uh, the paper by Kasevich, Vinsov, and Yugunova, um, this algorithm can be successfully used for the automatic segmentation of written texts, uh, like in spaces between the words. Uh, so, the algorithm is based on the sim simplest version of the cohort model, introduced firstly by Marcin Wilson. Um, the program analyzes a text uh, um, in a phoneme by phoneme manner. Actually, while processing a written or printed text, uh, the program is working with the graphic symbols, uh, so it's better to say element by element analysis. Uh, as soon as the first uh, phonemes or elements uh, are read off and enter into the memory buffer, uh, the candidate word class, so-called cohort, is formed. Uh, it includes uh, all lexicon entries which begin with the identified phoneme, element, or cluster. Um, let's take as an example um, the phrase without spaces, Мы уже об этом говорили. We have already talked about it. Um, if we have to divide uh, the word string that you see on the screen into the words, uh, and if we do it element by element, the first variant of the cohort will include all the words beginning with m sound, or letter in this case. Uh, but every new element of a name analyzed makes the cohort narrower. Like this. Here we have uh, only uh, the words that will begin with my, 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 la, my, my, and so on. Uh, the program keeps analyzing symbols uh, so long as uh, at least uh, one <coughs> word within the cohort uh, can be taken at the match for the string formed in this way. The analysis stops and the word boundary uh, is put before the last element analyzed uh, as soon as the resultant string finds no match within the cohort. Uh, in this case, myu uh, is impossible in Russian uh, inside the word, uh, so we should put uh, the boundary between u and u. Um, the only difference of the algorithm described, uh, described by Kasevich and his colleagues uh, from the um, simplest version of the cohort model is as follows. The, prog the program does use the information about the essential uh, patterns of the words uh, uh, in the mental lexicon, um, of the words that should be segmented. Uh, so actually, if we come back to uh, our phrase, мы уже об этом говорили. Um, the information about stress will allow us to uh, interpret uh, the second word, уже, uh, as an adverb, but not as, 
a comparative degree of uh, the noun uski, uzhe, that is pronounced as u uzhe. Um, as an essential pattern in Russian characterizes a word form, not a lemma, the word list uh, or the mental lexicon uh, used in the program is a list of word forms, not the list of lemmas. Um, so the cohort activated by the string мы уже об этом говорили, if we have only two first letters мы, uh, should include not only the infinitive мыть, but also мыл, мыла, and so on. Um, as I've already said, this mechanism uh, has been used for segmented printed texts of different types, uh, fiction, um, plays, and periodicals. Uh, these texts were lacking all spaces between words, and they were presented first in orthography and then in phonetic transcription. Uh, all the texts were taken from the corpus of standard written Russian that is now available at naruska.ru. Uh, the lexicon that served as a prototype of the mental lexicon of a listener was based on the same corpus and comprises first uh, 46,000 entries. Uh, so all the words uh, in the text were familiar, so-called familiar to the program and could be found in the lexicon. Actually, it's uh, the most frequent situation that we have in our natural speech because um, uh, by no means we meet uh, uh, unfamiliar words such as names, uh, new names uh, from time to time, but normally we cope with the words that are already stored in our mental lexicon. Uh, the results uh, uh, were quite encouraging. Even such a simple and, as you can see, straightforward model that didn't take into consideration uh, such factors as, for example, word frequency and semantics, allowed identifying correctly more than 98% of uh, all word forms from the text, from written text. Um, uh, the figures in a red circle show uh, the percentage of failures. You can see it's just a little bit uh, higher than 1%. Uh, that's it uh, for the written text. Uh, our present research is focused on spontaneous speech and we are checking whether this algorithm can be used uh, by a listener while recognizing uh, spoken speech and spontaneous speech in particular and uh, um, can be used also while modeling uh, the behavior of a listener while recognizing spontaneous speech. Let's now listen to the same fragment. Uh, this fragment will be exp uh, extracted from a spontaneous dialogue. Uh, if you listen to the whole phrase, it sounds quite natural and uh, you understand all the words. Uh, but um, if we uh, listen only to the first two words, this word sounds like uh, very similar to муж, that is husband in Russia. If we take the second word, actually not exactly two seconds. It will sound like Java, and uh, the spectrogram will show us that it looks like uh, uh, Java. Uh, the sounds are similar. Mm. So, as you can see and hear uh, from the example, uh, phonetic reduction makes phoneme by phoneme analysis impossible in this case, uh, because even such important elements as stressed vowels in mu. Um, can be omitted. So um, the process of segmentation becomes even harder uh, if uh, a sound cont contraction at the word boundary results in a new sound. Here we have just U uh, from the second word and the uh, A also from OP. Uh, no new sound occurs, but sometimes uh, a new sound occurs uh, at word boundary that doesn't correspond neither to the last sound of the first word nor to the first uh, to the first sound of the second word. 
For example, что uh, есть uh, is pronounced like Fish. So there is no uh, O, no Ye, ye uh, sound, and uh, the vowel is like U. Uh, by no means, uh, our algorithm uh, will, uh, uh, will win, and the situation will get better uh, if we incorp incorporate semantics in the model. But um, it's quite time consuming as we, uh, we are now looking through all the cases of sound contractions at word boundaries and highly reduced word forms from our material, trying to describe all possible strategies using semantics. Um, but uh, for now, for, the present presenta for the today's presentation, I would focus only on the phonotactic aspect because we found uh, as a byproduct of our semantic uh, um, analysis, we found several um, cases interesting from the uh, phonotactic uh, point of view. Uh, at the material for uh, our investigation, we use a corpus of spontaneous Russian dialects taken from the radio interviews recorded in a studio and TV talk shows from, uh, with respective broadcast quality. All texts are provided with orthographic description and phonetic transcription. Transcripts are available also at narusko.ru. Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, separate page for it. Uh, the analysis of sound contractions surprisingly uh, shows uh, that generally uh, our basic algorithm used for written text first works even without uh, semantic information. Uh, in the majority of cases either only one candidate is left in the cohort before the contracted sound becomes available to a listener. Here you, uh, you can see 812. Um, even before the contracted sound the appears, 800 uh, can be interpreted only as uh, the word form 800, that means 80. Uh, the second situation is uh, when a contracted sound makes a sound string impossible. So no matches can be found in the mental lexicon, neither for the left phonetic context plus the contracted sound, nor for the contracted sound plus its right context. Uh, here we have three du, and for three du, there are no matches in the mental lexicon, as well as for uchitile, we have only uchitile. Um, However, sometimes information about phonotactics is needed in order to apply uh, our basic mecha mechanism. Uh, and here I would like to discuss one example uh, that you probably saw yesterday in the poster, uh, while well, um, during the poster session, uh, in the poster presented by uh, my colleague Yulia Nigmatulina. It's повод для, cause for. Here, uh, at word boundary, we have uh, impossible in Russian um, combination povadlu. Uh, as far as the listener reaches this point, he understands, he or she understands that uh, a boundary should be uh, postulated. So uh, the, the first step is to put uh, a boundary between d and l. Uh, but in Russia, and uh, we'll get, we can interpret such a phrase like povod lishit, for example, an occasion to deprive, or something else. There are such uh, contexts. Uh, but in Russian, as well as in Dutch, for example, a final divorcing takes place. Uh, so the word, uh, word povod uh, should be pronounced with final, uh, final t before l, before sonant. Uh, or before consonants v, v. Uh, and should be povod lishit, if it will be the case. Um, so we uh, think that 
In such a case, uh, a listener uh, understands that uh, from the phonotactic point of view, this combination is impossible, and so sh he or she should divide the last sound of the word povat into two sounds and get uh, povat, for example, dla, but at least uh, to understand that the uh, should be interpreted as two sounds, the last sound of the word povat and the, uh, the first of the next word. Um, if we talk about reduction, uh, the situation is uh, a little bit more complicated. As the cases of reduction in spontaneous speech are much more numerous than the cases of contractions, uh, and so it turns out to be more difficult uh, to look through all the reduced word forms even in our material. For now, I would like to put forward only two ideas that we got after uh, several experiments on reduced word forms. Uh, consonants turns out to be more perceptually important than vowels. In the experiments on reduced word forms, uh, recognition, uh, the subjects tend to recognize correctly the order of consonants, and especially the first consonant uh, being less accurate about vowels and number of syllables. Moreover, while reconstructing reduced word forms in the context uh, to canonical ones, the subjects can add or delete syllables and substitute vowels, even stressed ones, whereas the consonant structure tends to remain intact. Uh, for example, um, a word form uh, pronounced as post uh, that was initially prosit prislat. Prosit prislat photography. It was initial context uh, is asking to send photographs. Prosit uh, In uh, such a context, uh, uh, artificially created, uh, um, was uh, interpreted as pust, pust živet. Uh, so, uh, the subject uh, changed O for U without any problems, and actually uh, the percentage of such answers were uh, more than 70. Um, but the initial consonant and all the consonants in, in this uh, example remain the same. And the second uh, example is... Uh, in this context, uh, GIT uh, was interpreted as GARIT, Whereas in the initial context, it was a reduced variant of the word Gavarit is speaking. Uh, so, to conclude, uh, the algorithm of word segmentation by identification uh, has been shown to be effective for segmenting continuous printed Russian texts into words. In order to make it applicable for the segmentation of spoken word, the algorithm needs uh, to be developed due, due to the phon uh, phonetic reduction and sound contractions at word boundaries in spontaneous speech. Uh, it seems that the algorithm should be language specific uh, due to the facts that I have already described. Um, linear phoneme by phoneme analysis should be substituted for the analysis of perceptual important elements, uh, consonants uh, for Russian. Uh, and uh, the last but not the least, actually, it has number one here, semantics should be incorporated in the model and we are now in the process of thinking how uh, to cope with it. So, thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, and now it's time for questions. Um, I have uh, two questions. The first one is a um, practical one. As far as I heard, um, your example, prosil uh, prosit uh, so uh -huh. there was a field for uh, field pores there. Prosit uh, prislite. There was a creaky, cre creaky pause. That do you consider field pauses intervening uh, uh, between words or even sometimes inside words? No, that often happens. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, 
in this uh, research, we are not considering them. But uh, generally, yes, of course, they are marked in our corpus field pauses as well. Uh, unfilled pauses. Mm -hmm. They are marked. And, and a more general question. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the developed algorithm uh, can, uh, addresses only an, a practical application of word recognition or something like that? Mm -hmm. Or is there something essential behind it? Uh, I believe that there is something essential behind it. Because uh, actually, why do we call it the functional model? Uh, model? Because uh, we are not... Uh, um, working on practical, only on practical issues. We are thinking of uh, how a listener copes with it, how we are coping with uh, uh, reduction, with uh, spoken word recognition. So our aim is not to um, develop the mechanism that will work, uh, because it may turn out that it's just engineering, uh, the, mm -hmm. the matter of engineering. But uh, we are uh, trying to understand what do we have in the brain and how we are coping with it. So, uh, Is there then, is there anything besides the effectiveness or efficiency of, of the procedure uh, that can prove that there is a sound cognitive reality uh, behind the described process? Uh, I, uh, I can't answer uh, right now whether uh, I think there is, because uh, we need semantics. Uh, we need semantics and not only semantics, but wider context. As it is shown now um, by our Dutch colleagues, uh, we, uh, even the nearest context, nearest semantic context is not enough. So we need just like uh, the wide cognitive basis to understand uh, highly reduced word forms correctly. But if we are talking about sound contractions uh, at word boundaries, it seems that we can cope without um, deep cognitive basis. Thank you. Uh, very interesting, thank you. Uh, the moment you uh, switched from the written modality to the auditory modality, you have opened a big, big can of worm, uh, worms. And so uh, you have just, you're just scratching the surface, if you want, by uh, talking about uh, uh, word final uh, consonant, uh, uh, consonant um, devoicing. devoicing. So uh, um, my question is, uh, how many um, rules uh, will you include uh, at the next level of um, phonological ph uh, phonetic processing? Uh, uh, transitional probabilities, uh, uh, constraints on consonant clusters, regressive assimilation, there are so many things that are there that can be encoded at the allophonic level. Are you, are you planning on including that? Um, yes, uh, but uh, for now, for, for the moment, we uh, managed to find and to, uh, to explain from the point of our uh, algorithm only these quite small mm -hmm. uh, on a tactic issue, but um, I'm not sure that uh, all the rest will work for sound contractions because, uh, um, and maybe it's uh, also the matter of language, and uh, in different languages, different uh, constraints will work. Uh, so, for now, I can I have information only about this. Uh, on a tactic constraint, and uh, we didn't manage to find anything else that will be can be in incorporated. For all the other ex uh, examples, uh, controversial examples, I mean, uh, it seems that semantic will be the easiest way if we can for, uh, formalize it. But it's exactly another <laughs> it's uh, another big <laughs> can of worms. Yeah. Thank you. How do you um, um, address prosody in your uh, studies? I, I noticed that your transcription doesn't have uh, stress marks, but apart from stress, there are many other kinds of prosody, including discourse accents and so forth. Uh, so, 
Uh, Actually, we do have stress. It's marked with plus here, mm -hmm. just uh, to make it easier. Yeah. But okay, but there are um, all kinds of other prosody, uh, um, prosodic phenomena, and they, I think, they crucially uh, affect what you are um, studying well, because uh, mm -hmm. um, the like discourse accents or something like that that um, leads to completely different uh, phonetic realization of uh, segmentally identical sequences. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, now we are, it's like in parallel, we are working with uh, pauses in spontaneous speech and comparing um, uh, like, uh, clauses, uh, divisions and uh, clauses in spontaneous speech as well as uh, pauses in spontaneous speech because there are quite a lot of clauses that are divided by unfilled pauses and now we are uh, working with it, and we are trying to explain, uh, trying to see actually, and to um, uh, to make instrumental analysis of uh, whether these clauses are uh, actually divided by the pauses, or there is a prosody that unites, still unifies these clauses, uh, uh, and uh, then pauses just doesn't have anything uh, to do with it. But we're just in progress with it. We just began it. So, and my question is, do you make decision by decision in each point, or do you use lattices like they use in uh, un automatic speech recognition? Um, now we do it like manually, so this ah, okay. is yeah. Because in speech recognition they use lattices and then they, they I don't know, the 20th word can influence the first word and yeah, I see. they the, use probability for the it. The basic algorithm works with it, but uh, for written texts, but for, uh, for spoken word, we now use it like yeah. word by word, decision by decision. Yeah. So, uh, if there are no further questions, uh, we would like to thank uh, our last speaker in this session. And now we are going to have a lunch break uh, and the snacks are provided over there. <laughs>